All right, so in this lesson, we're going to be talking about equations of lines. If you remember previously, we have been talking about slopes. So we're going to use that information to uh, write an equation that uh, has information on the graph. We also want to be able to use these equations to solve problems. So some new terms we're going to be looking at. Uh, we're going to be putting equations in both the slope-intercept form and also into point-slope form. And here are the key definitions for those two terms. Uh, you should remember from Algebra 1 that the slope-intercept form of a linear equation is y equals mx plus b. Um, we're calling m the slope of the line. And B is the point where it crosses the Y axis. So the Y value uh, where it crosses the axis, which is otherwise known as the Y intercept. Uh, in point slope form, um, we this is handy when we just have a point and we know the slope of the line. Uh, because what we can do, we can take uh, Y, just the variable Y, minus the Y value of our point, equals m times this quantity here, just the variable x minus the x value of our point. And if you were to solve this, you could put it into slope-intercept form. But this is just handy for when we just have that information, and we don't want to have to solve for b, the y-intercept. Right, so our first example, we want to write an equation in slope-intercept form of the line with a slope of 6 and a y-intercept of negative 3. So my m equals 6, my y-intercept or b equals negative 3. So we're going to just go ahead and write this out. y equals 6 times x plus negative 3 or y equals 6x minus 3. Now to graph it, when you have it in slope-intercept form, it's pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and find negative 3 on the y-axis. So go down 3 and plot a point. And then our slope is 6, so we're going to go up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we're going to go over 1, since it's technically 6 over 1. And we have our line. All right, so here's a picture of that line drawn uh, much better than I drew it, uh, just so you can see it. So at this point, um, if you want to go ahead and pause the video to look this over, um, you're going to be prompted to answer this question. All right, so let's try this example. Write an equation in point-slope form of the line whose slope is negative 3 fifths that contains the point negative 10, 8, then graph the line. So here we want to uh, use point slope form, which if you recall is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we want to take y minus our y value, which is 8, equal to our slope value, which is negative 3 fifths, times x minus our x value, which is negative 10. Those negatives together become a plus, and we're left with y minus 8 equals negative 3 fifths uh, x plus 10. Now, as you can see, this one is a little um, difficult to graph in that form, but we still know the slope and we still know a point that it contains. Um, so that's one way we could graph it, or we could find the uh, x and y intercepts, in other words, what x equals when y is 0, and what y equals when x is 0, and we could graph it that way. Um, I think the first way is going to be a little easier for us. So let's go ahead and mark out negative 10. Not to scale, obviously. Um, and 8. 
Our point's going to be about right there, and our slope is negative 3, so down 3 over positive 5, so to the right 5. Do it as best you can, and we'll have a line something like that. And I'll show you the uh, computerized version that's going to look a lot more accurate. All right, so here's another question I would like you to try and answer. So go ahead and figure that, pause the video, figure it out, and then submit your answer. Now we're going to uh, determine how to write an equation in slope-intercept form for a line containing these two points, 4, 9, and negative 2, 0. So remember our slope formula from last section. Slope is equal to the change in y, so 0 minus 9 over the change in x, so negative 2 minus 4, we're going to get negative 9 over negative 6. Divide both those by 3, and also they're both negative, so they become positive. Uh, we're going to get 3 halves for the slope. We can use either point to get our slope-intercept form. Uh, we want to remember y equals mx plus b, but we don't know b. So we'll put in uh, 9, I'm just going to choose the first equation, 9 equals 3 halves times 4 uh, plus b. Now we're going to solve for b, so 9 equals uh, 3 times 4 is 12, divided by 2 is 6 plus b. Subtract 6 from each side, we get 3 equal to b. So y equals our slope, 3 halves x plus b, which is 3. And there's our final answer. Right now, let's do the same thing for the lines negative 3, negative 7, and negative 1, uh, 3. So we have um, 3 minus uh, negative 7 for the change in y because we're trying to find our slope over negative 1 minus negative 3 so 3 minus negative 7 is going to give us 3 plus 7 or 10 over negative 1 plus 3 which is uh, 2 and that's going to equal 5 which is 10 divided by 2 so then uh, my Y intercept again, we have to solve for B. So we're going to put in Y equals 5X plus B. Use either point. I'm just going to use the second one this time. So 3 equals 5 times negative 1 plus B. Or in other words, 3 equals negative 5 plus B. Add 5 to both sides and we get 8 equals B. So we can plug that in, and we get y equals 5x plus 8. Remember, you're always trying to find an m and a b. The y and x remain uh, variables of the function. All right, now you're going to want to pause the video and um, figure this out so you can answer the question in the prompt. And now go ahead and do the same for this one as well. Now let's look at what happens when we have horizontal lines. Um, we have write an equation of the line through 5, negative 2, and 0, negative 2 in slope-intercept form. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, find our slope, which is our change in y, negative 2 minus negative 2 as negative 2 plus 2 or 0 on top. So no matter what number is on bottom, we're going to have 0. Well, let's figure out what goes on the bottom. We have 0 minus 5, which is negative 5. So slope is 0. That means I have y equals 0x plus b. So y uh, simply equals b. I can use either points. And notice the y's are the same, so it doesn't matter which point I use for a horizontal line. It's just going to be negative 2 equals b. So we have y equals 0x, so I'm not even going to bother writing it, uh, negative 2. And if you think about it, that should make sense. 
no matter what value I put in for x on a horizontal line, I'm always going to get out a y value of negative 2. So I'll give you a chance to pause the video and try out this uh, concept check. So that is just a key concept. We want to make sure we realize that whenever I have a horizontal line, I'm going to have y always equal to b, the y-intercept. And then when I have a vertical line, I'm always going to have x equal to some other constant a. You can see in my two examples, I have the vertical line here, uh, x equals negative 2 and the horizontal line here, y equals negative 3. Now let's talk about writing equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. Uh, remember how the slopes of parallel lines compare, they're the same, and perpendicular lines are the negative reciprocal. So this line has a slope of 1 fifth, so perpendicular to that would be the negative reciprocal, so negative and then put 5 over 1. So make sure to make it opposite both ways. So that's my new slope. And we also know that it goes through this point. So x equals 2 and y equals 0. So to find b, that's the only other part we're missing, um, we have 0 equals negative 5, essentially, x plus b. So 0 equals negative 10 plus b, b equals 10. So my final answer is y equals negative 5, x plus 10. Notice my y and x are a mystery. My negative 5 goes in for m and my 10 goes in for b. Go ahead and pause the video. and. Uh, All right, so now we're going to look at a word problem. Um, we have an apartment complex charges $525 for rent uh, per month plus a $750 annual maintenance fee. So write an equation to represent the total first year's cost A for our months of rent. So we're looking for a total yearly cost. Um, that's going to equal 525 times how many months, we're going to call the number of months X, plus the 750 fee that you get no matter what. Uh, no matter how many months you stay there, you're going to have to pay $750. Um, you might start to look that this notice, uh, notice this looks like a slope intercept form equation. Um, so let's go ahead and continue with this problem. So let's compare this rental cost to uh, which charges a $200 annual maintenance fee, but $600 per month for rent. If a person expects to stay in the apartment for one year, which offers the best rate. Remember our other one was uh, A equals 525X plus uh, 750. So our other um, rent, we're going to call it B uh, equals um, 600 per month. So 600 times the number of months, we'll call it um, R plus that annual maintenance fee of 200. So a year is 12 months, so let's solve each of these uh, for 12. Um, we have, uh, for the first one, we've got 525 times 12, uh, which is 6,300, then another 750 is 7,050. That's if we put 12 in for X. For this one, if we put 12 in for R, we get 600 times 12, which is 7,200, plus another 200 gives me 7,400. Clearly, the annual rent of the first place is the better deal. All right, so finally, I'd like you to try this one on your own and submit your response. I go ahead and pause it. And that concludes today's lesson. Thank you very much for watching.